lot can happen in a year. And almost a year ago, I started this channel in hopes of being able to have an outlet for my opinion on knives. And one of my first videos was on the Demco AD 20.5. But when I did that video, this Demco did not look like this. It looked completely different. It was the stock Grivery Oz 10A version that was going for, at the time, $150. And I had some very big feelings about that price tag with this knife. And it's crazy because I got inundated with comments from people. Uh, some of them were not very nice saying things like, oh, you just want the views, which yes, I do want the views because if I spend time making a video, I want people to watch it. But my opinion was genuine. I truly felt like at the time that knife was not worth 150 bucks and it was 90% hype, 10% materials, which is not something that I can really stand behind. And that knife made me kind of angry because there's so many people out there spewing this garbage about how good this knife is and how it's definitely worth 150 bucks. And I could not wrap my head around it because I didn't have the context of having checked out hundreds of knives. Now, a year later, I do. The channel has changed. It's gotten better. My opinion and the way that I give my opinion, I feel has gotten better. Let me know in the comment section down below if you prefer the old school me that never does any over the head views. And yes, we will do that. This isn't just a talking head video. We will actually swap the camera around so that you can see it head on and we can talk about it. But I felt like what better way to celebrate the year mark by revisiting one of my most controversial pieces on the Demco 8020.5. Has my opinion changed? Let's check it out. All right, guys, so here we are. It's almost been a year later and so much has changed with the channel uh, and also with this knife and with it, you know, I wanted to do kind of a recap because my initial video on this that I made labeled before you buy or, you know, we deserve better. I made that before I had even 100 subscribers. I've learned a lot since then. I've grown a lot since then. So the only question left is, well, did my opinion change? Because ultimately my opinion in a nutshell was, I felt like this was overpriced and that the execution could have been better. That's my opinion in a nutshell uh, that I put out on that video almost a year ago. It's like 11 months and a couple days. Um, so it's about a year. <clears throat> now, as you can see, there's been some changes made to this knife. And for the record, in this current format, with the changes that I made, I actually really like this knife. However, I want to talk about why. So first, let's go ahead and mention the things I did not like about this knife initially. I did not like the price. The price on the Demco 8020.5 and Oz 10A and Grivery handle scales at the time that I had bought it, which has almost been two years. When I made the initial video on this, I had had it for seven or eight months. Um, but when I bought it, there was only the Oz 10 and Grivery versions, and those were all 159 bucks. Yes, I knew what the materials were when I pressed add to cart. I was just really hoping that the execution was good enough to justify that price tag. Uh, because how well made something is, is more than just the sum of its parts, right? Well, I wasn't necessarily impressed when it came. And so for 150 bucks, I didn't think that it was worth it. I felt like it should have been under a hundred bucks in that format, but it wasn't. And so my opinion started to form. The next thing I didn't like was the material composition. And that kind of goes with the first thing, but Oz 10A, Grivery handle scales that are super thin. Um, did not like that. The stamped steel pocket clip, I uh, didn't like that either. And I just thought that the materials also didn't justify the price. Uh, the next thing I didn't like was the stock and factory edge. The stock factory edge was hot garbage, by the way. A really inconsistent edge bevel. Uh, I felt like maybe it had some belt burn on that edge bevel. And so it, it just wasn't as good as it could have been. And that bothered me, you know, especially when you're paying 150 bucks 
Knowing what I know now, you know, knives made in Taiwan, Taiwan has a really strong reputation for good manufacturing. And so I, I was kind of shocked and dismayed and disappointed uh, to find out that something as simple as the cutting edge of the tool, uh, I was kind of dismayed by that because at that price point, okay, maybe the materials aren't there necessarily there, but you can still make a good knife. It's not all about material composition, but you've got to execute, especially on the most important aspect, which is your ability to cut. Uh, I noticed that it was losing its bite very quickly. I, I tore through some boxes with the factory edge and it stopped cutting so well. Um, now, Oz 10A is not the most high class steel out there. Uh, as far as its edge retention properties goes, it's a little bit worse than D2. It's about the equivalent of 440C. So if that gives you any frame of reference, 440C um, it, it's not as, it does not have as good of edge retention as D2. And then Grivery. Uh, Grivery handle skills are hot garbage. And if anyone out there wants to apologize for them, I'm not going to hold your hand. Grivery is hot garbage. Uh, I don't care if Benchmade makes it. I don't care if Demco puts it on his knives. Uh, there's no reason not to use G10. We've got plenty of sub $50 budget knives that use G10 and G10 is superior. Uh, more importantly, also after the $100 price point has been breached, we are officially in aluminum territory. So those handle scales were not good. They were thin and they were a terrible material and it could have been a lot better for the price point, especially when you're exporting that labor to a foreign country to save on your costs. I understand you have to have a profit margin. So I did not like the materials. I did not like the cost. I did not like the edge bevel and I did not like the pocket clip. So that is kind of why I did not necessarily think that anything justified the price at that point or justified the rave reviews that many popular reviewers at the time were giving it. And keep in mind, again, guys, they did not have the S35VN version. They did not have the titanium version. At the time, you could not even get titanium handle scales for this. Uh, they had one aftermarket option. I believe you could get fat carbon fiber scales if you wanted to spend you know, over 100 bucks on those. Uh, and you could get some micarta scales. And they were still very thin scales, and that bothered me. Let's talk about the changes that I've made on this knife. Change number one. These are engraved aluminum scales from DNA Lasering. DNA Lasering is fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and link his website down below. If you have one of these knives, if you have a Demco 8020.5 and you don't wanna spring for titanium, uh, check out the aluminum scales. Aluminum is what this knife scale should be at 159 bucks. That's what it should be. Um, but it wasn't, so I changed that and I got some aluminum engraved handle scales. The next thing I got, which is also on DNA Lasering Store, uh, was this titanium backspacer. Now, he didn't have aluminum backspacers, which is why I went for titanium, um, but we got some titanium on there, and it's a good backspacer. These scales are thicker than the Grivery handle scales, so they add some thickness. And with that backspacer in there, it does add weight to the knife, but it adds a really nice comforting weight to the knife. It feels great in the hand, and as you can tell, those handle scales are thick enough to actually have some contouring, which also adds to the ergonomics. That is absolutely fantastic. Another change that I made was the pocket clip. That is not the stock pocket clip, and to be quite honest with you, this pocket clip isn't necessarily my favorite either, but it's a titanium pocket clip from Lynch Northwest, and it is deep carry, and it actually helps with the ergonomics as well. I don't have that pocket clip bill sticking into my hand because it raises everything up. Uh, the ergos are actually quite good on it now. And then lastly, I put my own mirror edge on the knife. Now it's not as polished as it could be right now because again, I use this knife. And so it is a mirror polish and it is very slicey. It works very well and because I lowered the edge bevel angle. 
it actually holds an edge much better now than it did on the factory edge for two reasons. For one, it's a much lower angle. So I believe that stock factory was somewhere around 25 on average, but it was inconsistent. Um, on one part on the factory edge, it was like 23. Another was 25. Another one was, you know, it, it was just inconsistent. So now this is at 20 degrees per side on both sides. When you do that, it widens that edge bevel. It makes it easier to maintain with stropping and it ensures better edge retention over time. So I don't know what the HRC is on this, but uh, it's holding an edge better than it was. Is it the best edge retention knife that I have? Absolutely not. But do I care? Is it easy to sharpen? Yeah, it's easy to sharpen. And it's something that doesn't necessarily bother me anymore now that I have my own edge geometry on there. So that's kind of where we are. I replaced the scales, the backspacer, and the pocket clip. The ergonomics feel much better now. Uh, aluminum is much better for a handle scale material than FRN or Grivery. And the pocket clip, while it's not necessarily my favorite, I don't absolutely hate it anymore. And this deep carry clip slides in and out of the pocket flawlessly. So ultimately, yeah, I really like this knife now. In this configuration, this is much better. It's much better. But let's go ahead and add up the costs. For the backspacer, which is titanium and these engraved aluminum handle scales, uh, that came in to around $90. If you add that to the cost of the knife initially, which was $159, we'll call it $160 for some easy math, we're still spending about $250. So, would I suggest that everyone go out and buy an Oz 10 version and then spend another $90 on aluminum scales and a titanium backspacer and uh, you know a titanium pocket clip? No, absolutely not. So why did I do it? Man, I did it because I really wanted to have a knife that I liked. I wanted it to be good. And I felt like in its original form, it just wasn't. So I turned it into something that I did like. And that's where we are now. So finally, let's talk about my opinion. Here we are in 2023, and now we have some new variants available. First and foremost, you can get a D2 tool steel version of the Demco 8020.5 with Grivery handle scales. And if you go to Knife Center, that'll cost you somewhere around the realm of 125 bucks. That's the new base model. Some people think fraudulently that you can't buy the Oz 10 version of this anymore, but you 100% can. If you prefer Oz 10 to D2, great news for you. Blade HQ has the Oz 10 version at $159, which is the initial price point, and that has not changed. So after that happened, people wanted something more premium, more premium. You can get one of these with S35VN steel and G10 handle scales, but that's going to cost you $250. And by the way, if you want one with 3V, that one is going to be about $175. And of course, if you want something way more premium with titanium handle scales, but still 3V, that's going to cost you $315 for one without textured handle scales and about $350 for one with textured titanium handle scales. So, it's 2023, it's a year later. I've had my chance to simmer, to think, to modify my own. Is it worth it in 2023 to buy a Demco 8020.5 in any of these price ranges? The answer is maybe. And I say maybe because if you care more about the shark lock than you do any other part of the knife, then go for it. But otherwise, it's still overpriced. The 8020.5 has sold and sold out and sold out because people love the freaking shark lock. And it's a great lock. Don't get me wrong. But I'll give you an idea. Here is the Snex Vision R made by Wee Knife Company, designed by Snex. And it's got a similar locking mechanism. They call this one the super lock. And before people start spouting out about how uh, Snex copied Demko's shark lock because they're similar, 
the super lock was actually around long before the shark lock and they are not necessarily the same they're just actuated similarly but this is a 270 dollars knife with titanium handle skills and 20 cv so if you're all about having a lock that you can actuate easily from the spine of the blade here you go 270 bucks 270 bucks you get 20 cv american made 20 cv <clears throat> and titanium so that's what i'm talking about when i say that this is overpriced demko has had the opportunity to really really bring down his costs and and to you know come down to the market average uh, because he sold so many of these that he's had that opportunity but he hasn't done that and that bothers me because instead of you know, falling into the market and creating something that's that's more fair. He didn't. He doubled down and he came out with other options. Now, if you don't believe me that when I say that Demko overprices his stuff, just take a look at these $50 G10 handle scales for the 8020.5. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Uh, for comparison, here is a Best Heckman Ronin with G10 handle skills, a pocket clip I don't hate, and 14C28N, which in my opinion is a better steel than 3V, and this knife costs 50 bucks. So for the cost of a set of Demco 8020.5 G10 scales, you can get a whole Best Heckman Ronin. And people wonder why I said that this was the budget banger of the year for 2022. Still not taking that back, by the way. At the end of the day, we do deserve better. We do deserve more. And if you want to fanboy out over one knife designer's design, be my guest. We vote with our dollars. Buy it if you like it. I like this one. Would I spend 250, 260 bucks to get this again if I were to lose this? Absolutely not. I went the extra mile to see what it would take for me to actually like this knife. And I do like this knife, but I would not do it again. So let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Did you like the video? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What are your thoughts? I'm Rochambeau. I'll catch you on the flip side.